Hello, 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 my darlings. Boy, has it been absolutely a thousand years since we were live on YouTube. I cannot believe that, Matt. It's, it's, it's insane. But hi, guys. Welcome. I already see that the chat is booming with super, super sweet comments from you guys. Hello, hello, hello. I'm reading the chat. I can see a lot of people from the US. That's so sweet. From London as well. Okay, super nice. Amberly saying excited to see Tony. So am I. Um, ooh, Happy Blaze Solid Link is not working. Hmm. Matt, is that true? Is that true? Is that true? I'm like, we'll is see. that true, Matt? Matt is checking them out. Uh, where's Case and Ayer? He's going to make it work. And if not, I will stop whatever I'm doing and I'm going to make it work. Because 10% off, that's going to happen today and tomorrow. So basically in the next 48 hours. Right, Manny? Yeah. All right. So just in case you guys, because I know that maybe there's some of you out there that have been uh, watching us, you know, previously on YouTube, like two years ago or something like that. They don't know who Matt is. So, Matt, you have to come no, and say no, hi. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, I don't know how many of you are not watching the bingos or live streams, but hello, I'm Matt. I work here, worked here for a bit, and we are going to have a great live today. So, thank you for joining. <laughs> that is our colleague, Matt. Um, he basically takes care of everything technical. Uh, so, that's really, really nice because then I can focus on having a really, really fun conversation with Tony today. So, we are going to have um, Tony over. We're going to ask Tony how this this magical yarn has, uh, you know, taken place. And we're going to figure out um, if you guys can actually get 10% extra. Can we do it, Matt? Can we get the extra? Is it working now? I, I, I believe the, the links do work. Oh, perfect. They are, they're good. They're fine. Okay, then that's perfect. Then, okay, so I'm just going to explain to you before we actually invite Tony in. I am just going to explain to you how it works because we have a lot of things lined up today. So we have some really, really sweet. Oh, our camera is just bugging. Uh, do you think you just have to turn it off and turn it on again, Matt? I think so. But the, yeah, okay, okay. It's fine. <laughs> but I look like an alien. So that's kind of funny. I look like a 50s superstar. But you guys can still hear me. I can hear that. Um, and you know what the funny thing is? The funny thing is that back a few years ago, Matt... I would have so many difficulties with our camera. <laughs> it would always... Oh, it's the same, Maddie. It's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really the same. Maybe it's because... Um... Oh, Matt is still taking care of it. So just, uh, just be a little bit patient, guys, and we will make sure that he makes it work. Amanda is saying, I thought it turned into a true crime podcast for a minute. Yes, and he took his knife. And No, I'm just joking. Um, all right, guys, so I'm, I'm just going to basically let you guys know. Oh, there we go. We're back. We're back in action. Okay, so Matt is going to make sure that I am uh, nice and beautiful on the screen again. Um, <laughs> and meanwhile, uh, I'm going to tell you guys the magic that's going to happen today. So we have obviously... 10% uh, discount, so please make sure that you do shop using the Happy 10 coupon um, by simply adding whatever happy place uh, you want to the cart, whether it's the melange or the solid, and then when you're checking out, use happy place in the coupon section or the voucher section or gift card section, right? Um, <laughs> then that's going to be available for 48 hours. Um we will have Tony invited in, hopefully, in a little bit. I foresee that the camera will probably do that again, Matt. Yep. He's, he's already, like, shaking his head, being like, yes, yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> and I do, I know that I spoil you guys, because you know what? It's also on top of the uh, bulk discount that you are getting at the moment. So that's super, 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 super nice. Um, and last but not least, we have a giveaway. We actually have two giveaways, Matt. We have a giveaway that's going to happen at the end of today's live. So somebody's going to be very lucky and somebody's going to actually win 10 skeins of Happy Place of their choice once we are done with uh, today's live event. And then, of course... Um, you are also going to participate if you purchase using the Happy 10 coupon. So if you use this coupon in your 
purchase today or tomorrow in the next 48 hours, you will automatically participate in another giveaway for another 10 skeins of Happy Place. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. So it means nice. that if you, if you buy just one of them and you use the coupon, you might actually win 10 of them. Ooh. So that's, I, I actually really like that, right? It's kind of nice. All right, but I think it's time to invite our gorgeous Tony in because I'm sure she's waiting impatiently. Hopefully, she's waiting for us. I hope that I set everything out fine. Um, yes, yes, yes. Ooh, 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 she is coming. All right, so she is slowly joining us. Oh, there she is. Okay, Matt is going to figure things out. Tony, don't panic. We're panicking here a little bit because you have no idea if this all technical works. Um, I don't know I, if it's going to end. I can hear you, but you, I can't okay. see you yet. <laughs> can you guys actually hear Tony? Can you hear Tony with an echo? Hello. Hello, everyone. There we go. She is there. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God I have Mac for it to do this. Matt, I would have panicked so hard, honey. I would have like, oh, I'm already sweating. <laughs> But Tony, you can't hear me? Or I can hear you. Me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, that is perfect. That is perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, then so Tony <laughs> hears me. You guys can hear and see Tony. She's Yay. echoing. Okay, oh, Tony, no. you're gonna have to like say hello, introduce yourself so that we can actually fix fix it up <laughs> a little bit so that to see if if, if if we're echoing or what's happening here. Okay. Well, hello everyone. I'm Tony. I am the crochet designer and educator behind Teal Yarn Crafts. Also the very grateful um, partner in this endeavor with Hobie. Creating Happy Place was like the highlight of my career so far. And I'm so grateful to be able to spend some time with you again, Jay. I'm very excited for tonight. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm also really excited because we've had this uh, this nice little uh, talk. I think it was two weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, together, and it was like so magical. And I wish it never, you know, it, it never ended. It was really, really nice, <laughs> and people really loved it a lot. So it was just, it was just really, really nice. It was awesome. really, really sweet, and I really loved it. So, so I'm I'm excited well, that we get to do it again, and I'm excited that we get to do it for other people that maybe could not join our Instagram live previously so excited for this yeah i'm starting to finally wrap my head around the fact that not everybody who's on instagram is on youtube and vice versa so hello Inst or, or youtube friends not instagram friends these are youtube friends hi everybody <laughs> but can you actually tony let's start with that can you tell us a little bit about yourself for those um for those people who actually don't know tony because i know that there's a lot of people who are joining us from uh, our end that might not know about you and and so on so just just tell us a little bit about yourself Awesome. I do love making new friends. So hi, y'all. Um, again, I'm Tony. I'm a crochet designer and educator. And what I mean by that is I've designed well over 200 patterns in my decades long um, career. I love everything from blankets to wearables to baby items to accessories, just whatever inspiration strikes. I always just try to follow that wherever it's going. So it's led me to some very exciting and inspirational designs over the years. Um, but in addition to the designing, I love to teach because I know there are folks out there that have aspirations of making these gorgeous crochet things that they see, but maybe they don't have the skills to do it. So I like to be that friend along the way to hold your hand and teach you new stitches and techniques, make your crochet practice a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. Um, and I do that through tutorial videos here on YouTube. Um, I also wrote a book, the Tunisian Crochet Handbook, because it's a technique that I got super duper obsessed with a few years ago. Um, and then I also love just dropping fun little tips either here on YouTube or on my other social media platforms. Um, but then outside of that, I mean, I guess I, I'm a cat lover. Um, I also just got my first dog back in Easter of this year. So I am a new dog mom as well. Um, and I live in the States. I live in Michigan, right outside of Detroit. Um, had the immense pleasure of having a few folks from Hobie come to visit back when we were developing Happy Place. So it was really nice to kind of show off my hometown. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really sweet, actually. Yeah, because, because Sasha and... Um... Who was it? Sasha and Sophie came to visit yep. you, right, in Michigan. Yeah. Tell us, yeah. tell us a little bit how that magical, like, because I know that you've been collaborating with Hobie for so 
many, many years now. But how did it come from a simple collaboration where you may be featuring, uh, you know, your designs on our website or maybe working with our own yarns to actually this, to <laughs> creating your own line of yarn? And I mean, like, how did that, you know, happen? Yeah. Um, so I started this relationship with Hobie um, back when we were all trapped in the house back in 2020 during quarantine. And I had a really great um, opportunity to learn about this, you know, overseas yarn company, because a lot of what we're used to working with here in the States are companies that are based here. So having the opportunity to expose my audience to Hobie, the alternatives and the amazing yarns, the great customer service. It was really my complete pleasure. So after I'd done a couple of those pieces on my own and sharing that company, Hobie got in touch and they're like, hey, do you want to do something a little bit more formalized? And that's when we got into some of our, you know, kind of one-off collaborations. Mm -hmm. I was grateful to have been in touch with Sasha almost since the very beginning. And I think we just really hit it off. I mean, she's an amazing person, a great ambassador for the company, and just really sold me on everything that Hobie could be if we were to move forward with um, a more established collaboration. So she's the one that first kind of pitched the idea of developing a yarn together. It's something that has been on my crafty bucket list as a business owner for quite a while. It's something that I definitely wanted to do. And I very much trusted Hobie's vision. I also appreciated how adventurous Hobie is with yarns. Like, y'all will try it. <laughs> There, <laughs> there are fibers and colorways and different patterns and things that I've never seen on other sites. So I thought that was really cool that Hobie would be open to trying something a little bit different that we can't necessarily get here in the U.S. market. Um, so that's kind of how it all came about. And once Sasha was like, hey, we're going to be coming to the States. Can we meet with you? I was like, it's meant to be. So I, I got myself dressed. My mom as well, because she's my emotional support mom. That's what I call her. And um, we met with Sasha and Sophie over brunch um, right around Christmas time and really started nailing down the details. And the more we talked, the more excited I got about the whole thing. And I was like, wow, this is really happening. And yeah, yeah. that was kind of the, the start of everything. Yeah. yeah. Where, where like, because now you just said that, you know, you 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 like the fact that Hubi just has so much variety of yarns that you actually don't see in a lot of different places. What was your main inspiration for actually creating Happy Place? Because, you know, you kind of like have so many different kind of fibers. Uh -huh. How did you end up being like, OK, it's this fiber. It's like this fiber mix that is going to like be the one that represents me. I mean, you. Right. And yeah. That, speaks to me the most so what yeah. was your inspiration for it um well i really wanted to create a yarn that would be a great use for lots of different projects like i looked at my audience and i was like what is it that my toyc makers fan makes what is it that i love to make and what would be a good yarn fit and what i found is like i've got a very diverse audience when it comes to the types of projects that they like to make. So in an effort to make something that my entire community would love, I was like, I need to make just an everyday yarn. Um, so wool is my absolute favorite fiber. I know it's not, um, it's not something that everybody can work with exclusively. And also sometimes a full wool yarn can be a bit cost prohibitive. So I thought it made sense to blend it with something else. And cotton was my absolute first choice. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like those two fibers really complemented each other well. Where cotton might fall short, wool can pick up the slack and vice versa. And also, you know, the wool cotton blends that I've worked with in the past, I absolutely love the feel of them. They're super soft, they're durable, they can take color really well. Um, and you can also end up getting it at a price point that makes sense for most folks. Um, so that was kind of the inspiration of starting to put a yarn together. Honestly, when I went to the brunch with um, with the Hobie folks, I, I had like a list of a few different types of fibers I would love to work with but happy place kind of floated to the top so I'm like this is what makes sense in the grand scheme of what I'm trying to produce I didn't really want to do a novelty yarn a one-off or something that was good for the season I wanted something that you could use year-round that could come in great colors at a really nice price point and was like super duper soft and I think we achieved all of that with happy place so, I mean, I, I from what you're saying is that those were your basically your main considerations for this yarn, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I really wanted something that the majority of my audience could fall in love with. And I knew I needed to fall in love with it first. Yeah. And a wool cotton blend made sense for wearables. You can use it for amigurumi, for home decor. You can use it for baby stuff, which was super important to me. Um, yeah, and I think we, we ticked all those boxes with this one. 
it does tick all the boxes, Tony. And I, I, I praised this yarn a lot in the last live, and I, I, I am totally in love with it. It has become my favorite yarn, and that is that's a big thing for me to say because I've been surrounded by yarns so many years, right, and different fibers and different brands and so on. Mm -hmm. And the moment I touched this, the moment the boxes arrived, and this yeah. was like a few months back, right? Probably when you got them as well. Mm -hmm. The moment that happened, I was like, what is that? Like, it was just out of this world soft. Mm -hmm. It's soft. It has a squishy factor. It's super, super nice against the skin, even though you might think, oh, but it has wool, so it must itch. It does not itch a oh. single bit. Mm -hmm. It's just perfection it's a, i love this yarn i love it so so much wow. so, yeah. oh you're so sweet you're gonna make me blush jane come on no, but seriously <laughs> it's 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 a an, an extraordinarily well thought yarn it's mm -hmm. it's just beautiful and i mean ugh, so many things to say about it don't even get me started with the colors and oh, okay God. but let's 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 wind back a little bit huh. and tell us a little bit because designing a yarn mustn't take you uh, a week or a month it must take you way longer so tell us a little bit about the design process of actually creating this beauty that i'm holding right now because i'm sure it's it's, it's a very thorough uh okay. process that takes ages yeah i mean as a designer and somebody who uses yarn i was never really privy to the process of taking a, from like concept into an actual usable skein so going through all of this with hobie having like the weekly check-ins and understanding where we were in the manufacturing process that was all incredibly eye-opening to me um and the fact that we were able to turn around a yarn in you know i mean it took several months but it honestly didn't even take as long as i thought it would i i very much trusted the folks at hobie I mean, they're the experts and they, you know, know, they know where to source it from. They know what blend of yarn, because I, I wanted a wool cotton mix, but we didn't know if it was going to be 50, 50, 75, 25. Like I really put a lot of those specifics mm -hmm. in Hobie's court because they're the experts. They do this day in and day out. And they really understood my vision of what I was trying to accomplish. And I fully trusted that they would execute. So they sent me um, a sample of the yarn probably, ooh, I want to say maybe like four or five months after we kind of started things off. And mm -hmm. when I first touched it, I was like, oh, wow, this is lovely. But I'll be honest, the yarn that I ended up getting when the final Happy Place came together, light years better than even the sample that I got. And I very much liked the sample. Yeah. So the yarn only got better with a little bit more processing, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, just kind of putting it all together was really cool. So the yarn itself, that was kind of in the hands of the product development team. I was really grateful to work with one of the designers that you guys have there at Hobie to put the label together, which was oh, yeah, a lot Daniel. of fun. Yes, with Daniel. And he um, actually took a photograph of some headshots that I did and made this gorgeous line drawing, which I don't know. There, it's something kind of special about having your face on so many skeins of yarn, knowing that your face is on a product that's in so many people's homes. Um, I don't know. It's kind of surreal. It makes my brain explode a little bit. But like that was a really, um, a really meaningful part of the process because we were trying to decide what that label would look like. We wanted it to have an impact. And I definitely wanted it to be tied to me and my brand. And the fact that Hobie believed in me and our partnership so much to put my face on yeah. a product they were yeah. selling, that was like, wow. It was just, it just further cemented that really strong and good relationship I think we have. You mentioned a little bit something about your first sample you got and then this ending up in this, right? Mm -hmm. I, I know Kat, who, who basically is the queen of, she is so meticulous mm -hmm. with yarns. <laughs> I remember yes. that, uh, I think it was maybe a week ago, uh, I was downstairs in, in you know, their department checking out to see if I can get some sneak peeks of what's coming <laughs> and so on. And she was looking at some uh, hand-dyed uh, mm. yarn with speckles on. Ooh. And she was so not happy with it. You know, she was, I, I thought, oh my God, that yarn is beautiful. She's like, it's not up to standard. We need better here. And I'm like, whoa, cat, but it's still very cute. Like, you know, but the speckles are not well-defined. I want the speckles to be super well-defined. So I understand how... You know, she probably is very, very like if she has something, if she understood a message from you, she would yeah. go through, you know, uh, through what do you call it? 
every hardship you can envision to bring you exactly what you want. So I'm sure that she worked really, really hard to to make sure that happy place yeah. looks the way it looks because it's not only the fiber consistency and, and you know, the mix of 50-50, but it's also this cute donut shape mm -hmm. that is just because they could have they could have made this into a hank they could have made this into a you know so mm -hmm. the fact that you also chose this shape and that is so yeah. nice to feel in your hands and it yeah. feels so dense and yeah. so i don't know yeah. it has this feeling of it's compact it looks good it doesn't like flop <laughs> and like you know lose its shape so it's really really i think that all of these details Sometimes us crafters, we actually don't think about the yeah. process of and the energy and efforts that are put into creating something like this. But, you know, I think it's those details that really set happy place apart. Right. Yes. Because it's got all of these contradictions to it. You're you're working with like a half animal, half plant fiber. So you expect it to feel one way. But it feels completely different. So it's it's soft and it's squishy, but it's also dense and it's got like this this firmness to it. And uh, the color shows up really beautifully between the solids and the melange. But it's but like they work really well together. I don't know. I, like even when I've tried to express like my initial thoughts and feelings about Happy Place, it's almost a little bit hard to articulate because until you get this yarn in your hands, yeah. I can't imagine too many combinations of words that would really do it justice. Like it is, it is truly unique, at least compared to anything that I've worked with here in the U S market, um, especially at this price point, that was something that was super important to me and having somebody like Kat in your corner to make sure all of these details come together in this package that like everyone can get so excited about. I mean, yeah. it's amazing having somebody like her in your corner. And I mean, you know, just to throw it out there, I'm sure folks who've, either purchased Happy Place or I've looked into it, I've noticed that one of our colors are missing. Our color 37, um, Salty Licorice in the solid color. And Kat and I worked together very closely to develop all of these colors. And that was one where the samples came in and she was just like, I am not pleased with this. We cannot put this out. And yeah. I 100% felt the same. I was like, wow, she shut that down before I even had to. So yeah. that meticulousness, really played into I think what's making happy place so successful and has created this really magical yarn yeah yeah I mean yes for sure those are all of these uh, the, all of these the little details do set this yarn apart from a lot of different kind of yarns we have here at Hubi and a lot of yarns that I've actually worked with from other brands right because I do tend to also test out because I'm like hmm what do they make is it better mm -hmm. than ours or like and then I'm like no nothing is better than ours ours is the best uh, but but now that we've talked about things that set it aside, uh, you know, out from the crowd of yarns, what do you think makes, why do, actually, why do you think this yarn is so perfect for crocheting and for knitting? Because you, are, I know you started your journey with knitting, right? Yeah. Very, very, a uh, little few uh, weeks ago, maybe even. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, um... So I've been playing around with knitting for kind of my entire yarny career, but I feel like I've just taken it seriously with this most recent project. Um, often when you're taking on a new craft, right, everybody suggests like pick something small, pick something easy, do a hat or something like that. Well, I started a knit hat. I got halfway through and I just tossed it because I just got bored with it. I was like, I need to make something that I'm really interested in and I don't wear hats. So it wasn't for me. So I just jumped straight to a sweater. Um, I found a really amazing pattern that Happy Place works perfectly for with almost zero alterations. And yeah, I'm really, really enjoying the knit process. It's very like meditative and relaxing. I love just kind of the tiny motions of it. So compared mm -hmm. to crochet, it's like night and day. Like I don't even necessarily compare them because I, in my opinion, they're two completely different crafts. Um, but I think Happy Place works really well for both of them because you've got a lighter weight. you got a DK weight, which was really important to me because I feel like it's really usable mm -hmm. for a lot of different types of projects. Um, also, when you've got that wool cotton blend, like I was saying, those two fibers balance each other out incredibly nicely. So it works well for wearables because the cotton is not as stretchy. So it won't let the wool kind of, you know, overstretch. Um, but then the wool is also incredibly soft and it offsets some of that firmness that you get from cotton sometimes. Um, I think too, you know, we end up with a machine washable fiber, which was thank God. Thank God. On top. <laughs> it's 
whole thing. Yeah. So we've got this machine washable fiber making it great for baby items. Um, you've got something that comes in lots of different colors. So that's amazing for Amigurumi. Um, I don't know. It just, whatever you're kind of into, I think it plays really nicely. And I also find that this yarn could work well with other fibers. Like I've got this vision of making this nice kind of poofy sleeve sweater with a strand of happy place held together with like a mohair silk blend to give me like a nice fuzz to it yeah. because happy place has a little bit of a halo, but I yes, think it could, sure. yeah, it could look really lovely with like exaggerating that halo a little bit, but you've still got something that's wearable and that little bit of cotton is going to make sure you don't overheat. So. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. But but you did you did kind of design this in mind for crochet Absolutely. initially. Yeah. Um, did you have like project specific projects in mind? Because yes, you said that you wanted it to be very versatile for mm -hmm. babies, for wearables, for blankets, for amigurumi, and so on. Mm -hmm. But was there like something super super specific that you thought, okay, this yarn is gonna always be perfect for sweaters or tops yeah. or because now you started making more wearables mm -hmm. uh in your in your super large catalog of designs um yeah. so tell us a little bit about you sure. know a little bit about it yeah well if i can be a little bit selfish honestly i totally. wanted to develop a yarn that i could always use for my temperature blanket so i do a temperature blanket every single year and I wanted something in great colors with a lightweight um, that was easy to stitch, looked great in a lot of different stitch patterns. And I think we accomplished that with Happy Place. So regardless of how I change the style of my temperature blanket every year, I can always come up with something that's gorgeous, that's easy to work up, and it's going to come out the perfect size. Um, I know temperature blankets aren't everybody's thing, but... I set out to be like, what are the biggest projects that I like to make? What are the projects that I like to make over and over again? Yeah. And blankets are that for me. And I like Happy Place for a blanket because then, again, you can use it year round because you've got that balance of the wool and the cotton. It's not going to mm -hmm. be too hot in the spring or the fall. It's not going to be too cold. Um, so that was kind of my mindset of what I wanted to personally accomplish with Happy Place is having like the perfect yarn for blankets, whether it's for me or for a gift for a baby, whatever it happens to be. My temperature blanket, of course. I'm really excited. I've already started charting out my 2024 temperature blanket using Happy Place. It's really, really nice. I see, already see people in the chat saying, I'm working on one too. And oh. Mary's like, I want to make a temperature blanket someday. And like, it's so nice to do one because it's a very, very nice way of, of giving yourself, I feel like a small break or like a palate cleanser from your larger projects that you might work on, even though it's a large project in itself, because yeah. you just do it little at the time. You know what I mean? Just a little bit every day enough to like, you know, Keep yeah. you feeling a little bit spicy and not like because right now I'm working on so many different projects mm -hmm. and I have a sweater that is just taking forever to do. And like doing that repetitive, like, you know, just doing the same thing repetitively. Right. Because I'm on the large side. So when mm -hmm. I make a sweater, it has to be always like a double XL or a three XL. So it's like very, very large sizes. So it's just like ugh, it takes me forever to make a sweater. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So it's really, yeah. really nice to have that in between, like a small little project to, ah, come on. I can do like one or two rows of whatever, right? Like in this case, a temperature blanket and kind of like cleanse your palate a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. how I feel about temperature blankets too. It's just always kind of in the background. So if you're working on something, you're like, ah, I need a break. There's always something else available to stitch on. Yeah. And um, I, I, this year is actually my fifth year working on temperature blankets. Next year will be year six. And I feel like every single year I look forward to this project more and more because by the end of the year, I just have this gorgeous blanket that I'm so proud of and that I can use. I actually just pulled all my temperature blankets out just to like look at them in order the other day. And I'm like, Aww. I feel very accomplished. I feel very, very accomplished. It's a nice way to just kind of track my year and just relax into this project I'm always looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. I actually heard the other day about somebody mentioning that instead of doing a temperature blanket, you can make like a mood blanket. And that's so cool too. Yeah. Because it's like, what kind of mood do you have today? Am I sad? Am I angry? Am I like stressed out? Am I tired? Am I super joyful? Am I happy? Am I, you know, feeling? And then, you know, you match each color to a specific 
you know mood and you do that and so that's also kind of cool i thought i thought that i could give that a shot you know i absolutely love that idea my best friend who's actually never done a temperature blanket wants to start a project like this next year and she's doing hers based off of moods and i think what's so nice about it is you can still really personalize it right yeah like depending on how many moods you want to represent you can add more colors to your project exactly and another piece of that kind of project that I like is a lot of people will add journaling into it right exactly so once you pick your color for the day you stitch it into your blanket and then when you're done you kind of write down like well what made you feel that way today and exactly you know, is this positive feeling is this a negative feeling and it almost brings together kind of this therapeutic aspect to craft which I think is always innate in crochet but in that way you make it more intentional which I think yeah. is just yeah beautiful. I love that yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know, like even if like you don't necessarily need to journal it, you can sure. just meditate while you do it, you know. Definitely. And think, okay, today I'm feeling overwhelmed yeah. or sad or like and while you crochet or knit or you know, whatever you're stitching, mm -hmm. you can just think about it. Like why do I feel this way or Yeah. It's 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 it, like you said. It's it really adds on the, the therapeutical layer of of this you know of crafting, right? Yeah, it does. I love that. But you know what? Before I get a little nerdy, because I totally want to get a little nerdy with colors <laughs> at least. Um, is there like any particular technique that you've been working on, like that you've tested since you've gotten you know? happy place that you're just like you are t totally in love with i know what it is because i remember i asked you this question during the instagram live but mm -hmm. i totally want you to tell us like your favorite stitch oh my gosh it's so tough. you know what jay when when i get questions like this it always just kind of depends on how i'm feeling that day what my favorite is because like give me I, a top three then there, give me a top three top three well I made this sweater with Happy Place. This was one of the first kind of big finished projects that I made with the yarn outside of the designs I created. So I'm absolutely positively in love with this, not only in the granny stitch, but also just in um, like the way that it takes shape in garments um, like it falls perfectly and it's got just enough stretch and it looks great in the ribbing as well as in the open work of the granny stitch so i'm absolutely loving this for garments like i said i'm also knitting a sweater and i just did my first try on even though it's not even ready to split for the sleeves yet but i just couldn't i couldn't resist really and yeah i did the first try on it it was it was perfect gosh it fits so well and so I was just thinking about like okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna put the collar on and this I'll be able to split for the sleeves and I hope nobody thinks this is sacrilege but my mom has a couple of knitting machines so when it comes to doing all the stockinette for the body I'm gonna let her put it on the knitting machine just to save me a little bit of time um so I'm really enjoying happy place for garments so far um but other than that I'm trying to think what I've enjoyed happy place for i did like a little amigurumi um a little gecko i'll have to send you a photo of it when i'm done but i gifted it to my friend's daughter who loves her favorite color right now is green so she wanted all green things for her birthday and it turned look out how cute it is gosh it was so cute so like it works for amigurumi as well which is my first time kind of playing with amigurumi with the yarn actually in hand and i mean it was absolutely perfect i I dropped my hook size, like several sizes. So I've got all these nice, tight, little neat stitches. And that cotton in there plays really well with the stitch definition. Um, so I was really, really impressed with how it ended up working up. I'm excited. I got myself, I told you last time, I've been mm -hmm. traveling, so I didn't really have time to start on my project with Happy Place. <laughs> But I bought um, some really, really cute colors that thankfully I bought them back then because they're out of stock. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm super, super pumped to, to test it out. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous in cable knitting. So Ooh. I have something lined up in cable knitting with yeah. it. Uh, mm -hmm. And by the way, to answer people's questions, because people are like, oh, my God, like, when are they, when are you going to restock? We need, we need, yes, <laughs> I think it's going to happen in spring, right? Isn't okay. it in spring to restock? Yeah, I've I've heard a couple different things. I've heard January and I've heard spring. So I'm I'm still waiting for kind of like the final expectation of it. But I would say at the soonest, it won't be probably any sooner than January. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. still like that's just a few months away. So, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> if you guys love any of the colors that they're still available now. They're selling like hot buns, so make sure you do get them um, 
at least to start off on a project because it's it's such a pity if you would miss out on trying uh you know the this this gorgeous yarn you can get 10 percent off in the next 48 hours with the code happy 10 so make sure you you use it if you have these uh, beautiful yarns in your cart and speaking of beautiful colors <laughs> Let's talk about colors. Tell us how did you approach Tony selecting this color palette and tell us a little bit about the um the background of it because I know that this yarn mm -hmm. it all works together perfectly. It does. Like it yeah. doesn't matter what colors there's left, you can always combine them and make something beautiful. Solids right. and melange together. So yeah. tell us a little bit about, you know, your color development uh, <laughs> journey and, and so on. Absolutely. That was honestly my favorite part of this entire process because anybody who knows me knows that I am obsessed with color. Mm -hmm. I love putting color palettes together. I really like kind of exposing to folks that you might like a palette that you've never considered before. And I was really hoping to achieve that with Happy Place. And I think we, I think we nailed it. Um, so when it came to setting up the colors, um, we originally looked at 40 total colors. Um, so Hobie wanted me to put together a really big palette and then we kind of pare it down. So in the perspective of those 40 colors, I had to think, okay, how many of each kind of main color group do I want to have? So, you know, your red, orange, yellow, your whole, rainbow but then i also wanted to have a really good collection of neutrals that matched well with all of those colors in there um, i also had to think about you know when i'm buying yarn what are the issues that i often have building color palettes there are certain colors within a palette that i feel like either you don't have enough of or you don't have a, enough variation mm -hmm. it was like i want to solve that problem with my yarn for example i feel like a lot of palettes don't end up having enough good yellows um, so we've got two really strong yellows here in the palette, but then we also have a neutral kind of sandy color that leans quite warm. So yeah. you've got almost three different options a along with their melange complements to be able to create these nice sunshiny or like fall themed palettes. Um, I also, and, and this is, this is something that we are continuing to work on as we, you know, maybe consider expanding the palette, had to think about the colors that I don't typically use, but that I know a lot of other people like. So for example, I'm not really a purple person. Um, it's, it's been my least favorite color for like my whole life. So when we were developing the palette, I was like, I know we have to have a purple. But let's find a shade that I can get behind because I want to be able to, I want to be in love with every color that we create. Yeah, yeah. So even the purple shade that we created um, ends up being like this really warm, gorgeous purple. And within the skein, when you look a little bit more, it's got like this nice tonal nature to it. So it's not mm -hmm. just a solid purple. Um, so I totally fell in love with it. And it's one of, I, I'm pretty sure it's the first color that sold out. I was yes, like, oh, it was, yeah, exactly. It was like, it just <laughs> vanished. It yeah. vanished in like, I think a day or two. Yes, the, that one went really quickly. Aubergine. Also, when I was promoting it, like I just got really excited saying that word. I mean, how, how often do you get the chance to say aubergine? It's just a beautiful word. That is um, true. So like pulling the colors together was incredibly intentional. And I remember at one point when Sasha and I were having a meeting, she's like, you know, we've never done a color palette quite like this before. Um, and even that just had like, you know, all the happy chimes going off in my head because creating something new, something different that my audience had never seen was the overall goal for all of this. Um, so uh, creating the solid colors was easy. And then the melange came after that. And I give Hobie all the credit for that because they created beautiful complementary shades. So you can create color palettes super easy, even if you just wanted to use the melange and the solid of the same color yeah. together, it's always going to complement really well. Um, but yeah, I think building palettes out of color plate, out of happy place was a lot easier, you know, than I thought it would be and give people a little bit more confidence to build the palettes that they love. Yeah, because actually I wanted to, now that we're talking about colors and, you know, this whole universe that <laughs> these colors all together, like they, they make you think of something and tell us yeah. a little bit about the name happy place, because I know that. <clears throat> it has a little bit of a story. I mean, it represents something. It represents your happy place, right? Yeah. And that was also your first starting point, you know, like on in naming the, the yarn and so on. So tell us a little bit, how did you pick happy place and why did you pick happy place? 
Yeah, so um, going into that original brunch meeting with Hobie, we had a lot of points we wanted to cover when it came to kind of getting the concept of this yarn together. And mm -hmm. we we spent probably two hours talking about fibers, talking about the put up, talking about the label, talking about distribution. Um, and a lot of those things, we had some ideas floating around, but nothing was really firm. And the name of this yarn was like the only thing we came out of this meeting knowing for sure like we have the name that is the name that we want to go to which was happy place and in coming up with that name the thought was what name can we give a yarn that embodies the joy of whatever it is that you're making we didn't want to yeah. get really specific and put the word knit or crochet into it and we wanted something that felt like it connected directly with the yarn and also like my yarn experience and it made me think of happy place because when I'm sitting in the corner of my couch with my cat on one side and my dog on the other side and I'm working on a great project and I've got something warm to drink, like that is my definition of my happy place. Yeah. So it's like, how can we translate that to others? Because everybody's happy place looks a little bit different, but yarn is always involved, right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, so the idea of this, this, concept of happy place was creating that happy place wherever you and your yarn are so we wanted something that was easy to transport mm -hmm. came in great worked with lots of projects and would just make you happy every time that you use it so that's where the name came from I was really really proud of us coming out of that meeting with that concept because from there all the other pieces started to fall into place yeah and I really think that it's such a perfect it's 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 really the perfect name for this yarn because yeah. it's, it, it really transports you. Like as soon as you sit down with it, I've done yeah. small swatches here at work just to test it out. And every time I sat down and I kind of like zoned out because I was like, oh, I really enjoy this. This is very like, this feels nice, this yarn. It makes me feel comfortable. Like it kind of like, hmm, I could also take a nap in 10 minutes from now. You know, like hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm in a good place. You know, I'm in a happy place. Yeah. So it's very, very yeah. sweet. Um. But you mentioned uh, a lot of the times you mentioned solid and you mentioned uh, melange and I've seen a uh, like a, a comment uh, in the in the comment section. What is the difference between them? So let okay. us know the difference so I between put, the I, solid and the melange. I put a little peg wall up here, like right next to my desk. So like every day I get to sit and just stare at my yarn on the wall. Um, so here I just grabbed blueberry. This is color number 20. So this is the solid and this is the melange. So what I mean by that is the solid is where the wool and the cotton are dyed as close to the same color. So you get this beautiful kind of solid, sometimes tonal color throughout this game. So we've got a nice, really deep, gorgeous blue going on, but you yeah. can see there's like some tonality to it. Whereas the melange, which is the complement to the solid, this is when the wool is dyed, but the cotton is not. So then you get kind of this more, um, I don't know what you would call it, like this heathered look to it, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got this lightness from the undyed cotton, but then you also have the depth of color. So then when you stripe these two together, I mean, it, it ends up being a perfect complement because the same shades that are in the melange are in the solid and vice versa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the difference. So they're the same number, the same color number, but if you look at the label, the solid says solid, the melange says melange. So they're two different products, but they complement incredibly well. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, that makes it so easy when if you're having hard times, like, you know, picking colors, mixing colors together, that's just such an easy fix yes. for somebody who just wants to play it safe, find a safe option, just yeah. get the same color in both. That just, it's just, it's so easy. It's really, really nice. It makes it really easy. I've been telling people the absolute easiest palette to make with Happy Place is get a solid and a melange of the same color and then pick like a one, which is almond. Exactly. And add that in. so you've got like a nice neutral to go with it. Look at this. You could pretty much make anything with that. Look really. at this. So cute <laughs> together. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Speaking of projects and combining this, let's yeah. talk about your projects because there's yeah. such gorgeous projects out there that you released and they're free. And I'm like, what? How are these like these patterns are free? And I'm like, why are they free? <laughs> I would pay a thousand dollars to buy one. <laughs> you know but you know, like it's it's really nice that they're free. I mean, it's 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 amazing. Tell us about it. 
that was a really welcome surprise when Hobie and I were kind of working out the details of this launch, because um, we knew that if we're going to put out a yarn, we absolutely have to put out projects to go with it, just to give people that inspiration and help them build color palettes. Mm -hmm. um, so I got, you know, right into making the designs and things. And Hobie's like, you know, how would you feel about them being free and hosted on our site? Uh, and I absolutely love that idea because it makes every part of this yarn and this experience so accessible. You know, once you've picked out the colors that you want, built these really great palettes and your yarns on the way from Hobie, you don't have to worry about shelling out more money to make the patterns that go perfectly with this yarn. Um, so I thought that was a really, really fun strategy. And I was actually talking to Sasha and I mean, D depending on the pattern, I mean, there have been tens of thousands of downloads um, for some of these, which is like, like yeah, people are really, really excited about them. So I was just happy to get the designs done, but I think it was kind of a cherry on top for Hobie to offer them all yeah. for free. Um, yeah, because I, I noticed that, and you also were really sweet because you kind of ticked all the boxes here. Yeah. You have released a blanket, mm -hmm. a scarf, the palm scarf. Yeah. Um, called Chili. Very, very cute. Oh, you have it there? Oh, so cute. I have it. So I brought a couple of the samples in with me. So this is the Chili Palm Scarf. And when I was developing this, I wanted to kind of do a very non-traditional color palette. So we've got our Hunter Green, Aubergine, Almond, and then we also have Red Delicious going here. So these are colors I wouldn't normally put together, but I thought they worked really well for the they fall. Do. And then at the bottom, you can kind of take your leftover yarns and make these cute little pom-poms. Um, so that was a really fun project. And it also gives you a chance to experiment with Tunisian crochet, if that's something that's new to you. Look so you at can that see beauty. that gorgeous oh. texture. Oh, I love this project. Really fun. And then I also brought in my on-the-go bag. Yes, which... that was the next one I was going to mention. This one has to be my absolute favorite of the whole collection. Like, I just, I love this piece. Because, can I tell you a really funny story? Go ahead. So, I started working on the bag that I wanted to make for this collection very first. Like, before I designed anything else. And I had this whole concept about this, like, beautiful striped bag. And I was going to do surface crochet on it. It was going to be really pretty. Well, I finished the bag, put the straps on, and I completely hated it. Now, unfortunately, that was like three days before the photo shoot. And I was like, I need a new bag. So I just started racking my brain and I went through all of my notes and my sketches for like every design idea I've had since I started. And I found one that like literally the entire note was bag. And then it was this shape. There was nothing else. <laughs> I was like, it's like, okay, we can work with this. And I spent almost three entire days working up the concept for this in a sample. I worked it up in different stitches and in different colors. And this is what, this is the original sample and what I came out of it with. And I'm so very pleased with this. And the fact that I pulled it together like last minute just makes it that much more special. So can we see it up close? Because I love the stitch on this. It's so beautiful. Let me show Look you at that. that. It's so gorgeous. It's super cute. I love yeah. it. Very cute. It works up super quickly. And this is the only pattern from the project release that has a tutorial video as well. Ooh. So if you need know, extra help making that project, there's now a tutorial video for it up on YouTube. Lori22 said, I just finished the on the go bag yesterday. It mixed solid peach and solid sky. And I love the result. I oh, love so cute. That idea. So oh, cute. My. So cute. And Grace I'm just Hop is out saying, there. what stitch is the bag made of? I'm sorry? Grace Hop is asking, what stitch is the bag made of? Oh, sure. So this is a take on a half double crochet cluster stitch. So I call this the clawfoot stitch because it looks like the little feet on a clawfoot tub. At least that's what it looks like to me. So it has this really nice, like thick, tall stitch. So it's a really strong bag. Hmm. And... Like that, that strap is not going to stretch out. I know there's always a concern that crochet bags, if you put yes. too much heavy stuff in it, they're not going to hold up. But this is made with actually two strands of Happy Place held together. Okay. And yes. a slightly smaller hook for that gauge. So you get a nice, strong bag. And then we have how many skeins for, for the bag? Four. Four. It'll take four total skeins. Yes. Yep. Four skeins. Super cute. Yeah. I oh, love it. 
Me too. I made one for my best friend that gave it to her. So now when we go on our little library trips, we take our bags with us. That's so cute. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> you don't have the, the blanket with you, right? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, you right do? Here. Oh, my God. <laughs> that I'm super excited about because yeah. it is such a beautiful blanket. Like, look at that. Are you kidding me? It looks yeah. something that you buy in a store. Like, it's yeah. so precious. I love this piece. So I've been a fan of kind of like that checkered look for a long time. And I feel like that checkered look has been really popular in crochet. So I wanted to make something that paid homage to that. Also gave us a chance to use those solid and yes. the melange colors of the yarn and really show them off next to each other. So this is one where um, I actually crowdsourced the color palette from a lot of my friends. So thank you to my friends who let me come into their DMs and ask them a million times about different color palettes. I probably had like seven or eight different palettes for this project <laughs> and the one I landed on and I'm just... I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. It's oh, really precious. precious. I love it. I love it. How many actually, how many skeins did you use for that? Do you even remember? One skein of each color. So 10 skeins total. Oh. So like one of each solid and one of each melange of okay. the five colors in the project. And okay. then we use one additional skein of the almond color. The almond, yeah, for the edges. So yeah, for cute. Edges. I love it. And, and it was a little twist you did. One. So cute on the on the uh, on the frange. Yeah, it's so cute. So cute. Love and it. what's nice about it too, because you got to think about it like this: we've got a wool cotton blend, so we still have a little bit of lightness. It's not a really heavy blanket, mm -hmm. but it's just warm enough. Because my husband runs hot, um, so he can't be under too heavy of blankets. So I really made this with him in mind. So when we get into the winter time. Don't want to crank the heat up we can cuddle under this together without anybody overheating so yeah That's i'm it. really oh, i love this piece i'm just a blanket girl any any chance i get to make blankets i'm gonna do it <laughs> yeah i i get it i get it i get it all right uh i'm actually gonna just mention the tricolor trays because last time i talked about them i am obsessed with those trays because <laughs> i told you last time when we talked we have like so many different patterns for baskets a yes. basket here a basket there and this and that and but a tray it's the yeah. first time i actually see a pattern for a tray mm -hmm. and the combination of both the little one and the, and the larger one and the colors i don't know that picture just like speaks to me i'm like <laughs> i'm so obsessed with those trays and i really I... want to make some just to have them here in the in the office by my desk do you have yeah. them with you I don't have those with me. So I actually ended up gifting one to my mom. And then I have one in my main bathroom and one in my guest bathroom. So they are they are being put to use right now. Oh, they're so um, cute. Please, guys, love... check them out. The tricolor trays. I think they're a really, really fun way of also just testing out to yeah. see if you like this yarn. Uh, because, you, what, you need maybe two skeins? Just so one skein one. of each color. So there's three exactly. colors in the project all together. Mm -hmm. And so you need one skein of each. But it's, I mean, it's if you've got yarn left over from like a bigger project, so like the blanket yeah. or from the scarf, for example, you could easily turn those scraps into a tricolor tray. Yeah. Um, and it does come with two sizes in the pattern, like you said. So a smaller one that's really nice for like maybe pens and pencils, or you can drop your stitch markers in there. And then there's a larger one, which is nice if you've got, just got bigger pieces, either in your office or your bathroom mm -hmm. that you can kind of corral. Um, yeah, that was, that was a piece. Like when I was kind of making the list of the types of projects I wanted in this collection, I wanted a couple pieces that were like small, very giftable, and then also good for like leftovers and scraps, or like you said, for testing the yarn out. Um, so that's where the concept of the tricolor trays came from. So I was like, I want it to be practical. I want it to be usable, but I still want it to be small and easy to make. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, if you've just got like a few colors and you want to play around with it, I think that's a really great place to start. It's super, super cute. Yeah. And now we saw the blanket, but you also designed a pillow, the squish <laughs> pillow, which yeah. is super cute. Yeah, my niece stole that one. Is that Tunisian crochet? No, it's traditional crochet. Okay. It, stitch called the alpine stitch oh, that's true um, actually now i see it wait i'm gonna open it just to look at it mm -hmm. it's so true it alternates just regular double crochets and then also front post double crochet so you get this nice kind of bumpy texture to it um which i 
think is absolutely lovely. So I had a lot of fun working that one up. Um, but the the real fun of it is kind of how I stuff it, right? So when you have yes, because well, it's really like a, it's a very special bl like pillow, actually. Yeah. It is. So like you end up working the alpine stitch in the round, you seam up the bottom, and then instead of just putting a regular pillow form in there, I took a pillow case and I filled it with like really soft plush fiber fill. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that method, you can fill it as much as you want it to be. If you want a really firm pillow, you put more fiber fill in there. Mine is more it's like to soft to medium yeah, because the whole, the whole concept is taking naps on it. Like the, <laughs> the whole idea is that you want a pillow that's your perfect firmness so you can take a nap on it. And that kind of soft to medium fill is what I really like for my naps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then let's see. We also have, I noticed here, we have the open book wrap yes. as oh. well, which yes. is mega, mega adorable with the popcorn stitches added. Yeah. Love it. I've really enjoyed seeing people work that up because it's a it's a pattern that uses five different colors, which can feel like a lot. Um, but some of the color palettes folks have come up with are really dynamic, particularly kind of that solid bobble row. So I did mine in brown. I've seen folks doing theirs in gray or in um, the blueberry, the navy blue color, um, or even in the cream. So mm -hmm. you kind of use that bobble row as like your anchor. That's your neutral throughout the project. And then you can start throwing in all these other really fun colors. So that's been a really, really exciting one to see come together. That's really, it's really, really cute. Um, and what about the hat? Tell us a little bit about the beanie. <laughs> The so the serene stripes beanie, um, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of Tunisian crochet representation in this um, collection. So the serene stripes beanie is a chance to throw in a little bit more Tunisian crochet. So it's a striped hat. It starts with a um, honeycomb stitch around the border. So I wanted to do something different than just traditional ribbing. So you've got this nice textured border mm -hmm. and then you start striping up the colors. So like I was mentioning before, the easy way to make a color palette is take the solid and the melange of the same color and then add in a neutral literally yes. exactly what i did for this project <laughs> um and then you just stripe them until you get the height that you need and this hat is actually made flat and then seamed together so it's really great for beginners if you've never tried tunisian crochet before that's a good one to try out that is actually on my to-do list because uh i have my cousin's husband uh -huh. he has requested a beanie and nice. when he saw it, he said that he really, really wants one in like uh, the gray tones and so on, like gray yeah. and white and like, you know, a little bit more like a boy. I get uh, it. Or a boy. <laughs> so, so I'm totally going to give it a shot because we've talked about like Tunisian crochet and like I really need to, because it's kind of like, I feel like it would be perfect for somebody who knits and crochets like I am. Mm -hmm. It's just like, why don't I do more Tunisian crochet? You know, why don't, why don't I get into that? lane of crafting because i feel like i would love doing it right oh i think so i think so i always i always say that tunisian crochet is like that perfect intersection between traditional crochet and knitting so if you typically do knitting you're going to find a lot of the same movements and um a lot of the same construction that you know you find in knitting whereas if you mainly crochet of course you're going to recognize the tool and you're going to understand kind of the 3d nature of building yeah. fabric in that way um so yeah you should definitely give it a shot I, for I think sure, this is for sure. Sorry. but yeah. you know what before we move on to i think we want to like our last question the very time soon tell us about the little cutie you have there in the background right here yes yes, yes. yes. Yes, so this is the Fairy Dust Cardi. I'll kind of hold it up a little bit so you can see a bit more of it. So it's a nice long cardigan. It comes probably about like upper thigh length. It's got this mm -hmm. nice belt on it, this kind of open flowy collar with these pretty little picos. So this is a really special piece because it's the first time my mother, who was the one who taught me to crochet, and I have had a chance to collaborate on a pattern together. Um, so she actually, like once all the happy place came in, she actually took this yarn and designed this piece. Um, and then she gave it back to me. I kind of like did all of the finishing steps and got it photographed to really show it off in its best light. Um, so I'm really, really proud of this one. Cause every time I look at it, I'm like, Oh mom, like <laughs> reminds me of my mom. So yeah, this is a really lovely piece. It's completely size inclusive. We've got lots of um, different variations you can do to really make this piece your own. Um, so if you've never done a wearable before, especially a top-down sweater, 
fairy dust cardi is a, a really great option it's super super cute yeah. and now like my last question that i had at least for you is if you have any upcoming projects or like you know ideas mm -hmm. or something that you're really excited to explore with happy place in the near future like yeah i um I will be honest, I've been a little bit selfish with Happy Place. I've been doing a lot of personal projects with it lately, um, but I do have some additional projects planned before the end of the year. And like I mentioned, I am very excited to gear up for my 2024 temperature blanket, which is going to use Happy Place. So folks should definitely keep an eye on this space if they want some more Happy Place inspiration over the next few months. That's super cute. I'm actually really, really excited to to see what projects are, you know, like popping in anytime soon. <laughs> um, and just a little reminder to everybody, if you guys want to get 10% off, just simply apply the coupon HAPPY10 when you check out. Uh, it's really, really easy. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for today, Tony. That was a really fast hour. Yeah, it was. Like, I, I can't even believe I just saw that. I was like, that was exactly an hour and one minute now. Aww. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm just super, super excited to yeah. have talked and explored Happy Place. And I hope that a lot of people got to, you know, at least be a little bit curious about mm -hmm. this yarn. Yes. Because it's really, really out of this world. Squishy, soft, yes. versatile. Mm -hmm. really a pleasure to work with and i don't know man i mean it's, it's a, just totally worth trying it out i think it's the kind of yarn that you really have to try out to to fully understand and experience um it's very different i think especially if you're somebody who's used to working with acrylic or or um synthetic fibers working with an all natural yarn is just a completely different universe so if you haven't had the pleasure of playing around with some natural fibers this is a really accessible way to do it i mean yeah. there's there's a lot of reasons to try happy place but you just got to get it in your hands try it out and not to mention also because you you said it last time during uh the instagram live i feel like the price point for the fact that this is a natural fiber yarn, this is like wool and cotton, the price point for it is so great. Definitely. I really, really think it's a great, great price. Mm -hmm. um, and people so are also I, really surprised at how big the skeins are. Like, yes, I guess yes. like next to my head, you can see like, it's there's a lot of yarn in here. There so. is a lot of yarn and it's, it's these are 100 gram skeins, that's 3.5 ounces. Yeah. And that's a lot of yarn for $10. It really is. Um, really and, and, and you're, you just like, you just have it in the background and then, you know, like, yeah. you're like, oh, wait, that's, you know, finished after you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you knit it or you worked a very big chunk out of it. Definitely. So, it's uh, so it's, it's really worth giving it a shot. And I mean, I know that the colors, <laughs> the colors are so cute. And I'm, I'm sure yeah. that there's a lot of people who are like, oh, no, I wish there was this color in sock. It's going to come back. Don't worry. Hopefully in January, if not worst case scenario, it's going to come back in spring. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what? It's just it's a lovely yarn. Check it out. If if anything, just get one color, you know, mix mix the melange and the and the and the solid together for a project. Try yeah. out the tri uh tricolor um Trace. trays, if anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And and give it a shot because it's it's really, really beautiful. It's really it's gorgeous. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> so All really right. put it together, yeah. <laughs> um, so without further ado. Um, Matt actually found a, a giveaway winner for us because she's actually been very, very sweet. She's been very active. She's been very uh, chatty and so on. And she actually recently wrote in the comment section, "What? Uh, well, that settles it, she says. I'm definitely going to try Tunisian crochet at the beginning of the year. Well, Yay! Amanda worked you and me together, honey. We're going to be uh, <laughs> Tunisian crochet besties with Tony over here. Um, so congratulations, Amanda Wirt, for winning uh, 10 skeins of Happy Place. Uh, Matt here is going to reach out to you, Amanda. Um, actually, no, Amanda's supposed to reach out to us, right? Amanda, please write me an email. Shoot me an email at jaya at hubby.dk. So Matt is going to write it now in the comment section so that you can actually also see it. 
um, and then he will send you a coupon for 10 skeins of Happy Place. Yay. And without further ado, for those of you left in the comment section, please, please make sure that uh, you, if you are buying Happy Place in the next 48 hours that you use the coupon HAPPY10 because then you automatically um, uh, participate in the giveaway for another 10 of these that's going to be given out in the next two days. Mm -hmm. um, and that was pretty much it, Tony. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I and maybe, maybe when we are going to restock, who knows, maybe we're going to... Uh, have Tony again for a little chat, oh, just to just to nerd out on the colors or something like a quick uh, a live event or something. We'll we'll see about that. Make it happen. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but well, thank, thank you so much, Tony. Me. Thank you so much to your YouTube fan for inviting me over. This has been super duper fun. My this is like the the bow on top of my work day today, so it's a perfect day to end. It's a perfect Aww. way to end the day for me. So That's always so love talking to you. Likewise, Tony. And I hope we uh, get to see each other soon. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll make it so. We'll make it so. Beautiful. All right, honey. Bye. Carolyn. All right, guys. Tony is... Tony has left the building, my darlings. Uh, for those of you watching us, it would make the biggest, biggest difference for us if you could hit the subscribe button both um, on our channel, the Hobie channel, as well as uh, Tony's channels, uh, TL Yarncrafts. Um, and I'm super excited to actually be able to, um, yeah, pick a winner in two days. Somebody who's going to get another ton of these babies. Um, and so make sure you guys... Um, use the happy 10 to get the 10% discount it works on both um, um, on both just a simple skein as well as you know if you buy the bulk and you get the bulk discount uh, so yeah I think me and Matt were ready to go home and sleep I have my 20 week scan so in case you're watching us for uh, you know the first time here on YouTube and you haven't seen us in a ages in, in ages just a little heads up i have a little baby in my belly growing 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 and tomorrow we have our 20 week scan me and my boyfriend so it's gonna be really really nice to see the little guy um i'm excited about that so uh, i'm gonna go sleep now and get ready for tomorrow tomorrow's I gonna think, be a big day i think you deserve it i think i deserve it too matt yeah <laughs> but meanwhile happy place um super nice to see tony she is just fantastic to talk to remember to use the happy 10 coupon congratulations one more time to amanda amanda word for winning the 10 skeins of happy place amanda please remember to shoot me an email to jaya at hobby.dk um, so that I can actually, oh, she already saw it. She's excited. She said super cute so that I can actually send you the coupon and, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it guys. I hope I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.